Okay, so if, again, if we take a wheel, ro remember we're talking about rolling without slipping. We take a wheel and we are and we want to kind of find out what is what is the velocity of the center of mass? What is that? What is that? Well, if if this wheel is not slipping, then what 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 happens is as this wheel as it's rotating, if it ro if it rotates say uh I'm just say it goes through this, this uh, 90 degree angle so that this point ends up there and that point ends up on the floor. So just imagine this, this wheel is rotating like this. Well, this, the amount that of, what is this? This is the arc length, right? And so this means that on the ground, on the ground, it would have traced out a certain arc length or certain distance delta x okay and we know that if you've got an angle or rather like this if you've got um, your rotational coordinate there and you've got a radius there and this is s we know that s Right, that arc length is equal to r theta times your rotational coordinate. So, whatever, so this, there's my rotational coordinate, right? And I've got a certain radius, and so and that is s. And what we see is that um, this delta x is equal to s. The arc length is the same as this delta x. Which means that this point, the center of mass, moves through that same length as this arc length. So this is actually the, the change in position of the center of mass. So this is equal to R, um, really delta theta. So the change in angle... So this, this uh, delta x of the center of mass, the change in position of the center of mass, is equal to the radius times the change in the angle, the rotational coordinate. And so if we divide this by time, what do we get? We get the velocity of the center of mass is equal to r omega. r omega. This is what we're looking for. And so remember in the previous one we said that these two are coupled. They are dependent on each other. Remember for free rotation, for free rotation we said that V center of mass and your rotational velocity are not, they are independent. They are uncoupled. But with rolling without slipping, these are coupled. They are dependent. And so the velocity of your center of mass is equal to the radius times your rotational velocity. Okay? Now there's some very, very, very important thing for you to note here. Is that you've already seen something that looks like this. We've seen this one. The tangential velocity is r omega. And it looks identical, right? V is r omega. But these are not the same. They are not, not, not the same. This equation refers to any point um, at a distance from the uh, axis of rotation. All right? And so, this we could consider any point on the rim, right? That is my, my, velocity, my tangential velocity. There is my V that we're talking about here. Whereas this is the velocity of the center of mass. Okay? So now there's something 
Okay, so do you pick that up? Please pick that up. So, based on that, that's where we get this, okay? This is what I just showed us. The velocity of the center of mass is equal to the radius times the rotational velocity. Right? That's what I was showing you there. Okay, they used a big R, I used a small r. Okay? Now, there's something very important here. And then I also just spoke about this. Vt is r omega. And the textbook says, these two equations mean very different things. And I just explained that to you. Okay? Remember, so, this, first e this equation over here is the velocity on, uh, away from this uh, center of mass. Um, f away from the, the, this, this geometric center. Whereas this equation is the velocity of the center of mass. Okay, now this is very, very important. As a wheel is rotating without slipping, rolling without slipping, if you consider any point on the rim, actually any point, any point on the wheel, but let's Let's consider points on the rim. Let's consider this point. What is the resultant velocity of this point? Well, do you see that you have to include both this tangential component plus this um, center of mass velocity component? And so you need both that one plus that one to give you this resultant velocity at that point. Okay, and what about this guy over here? What is the resultant velocity here? You need to include this component, V2, plus the velocity of the center of mass. Because guys, remember, the center of mass is moving. This wheel is moving to the right. It's not just rotating. It's rotating and translating. So you, for each of these velocity uh, uh, vectors over here, you need to add this velocity vector. Okay, so at this point, this guy is going the fastest. This point is going the fastest on any wheel that is rolling without slipping. So every single point here, you can see it follows this kind of trajectory. Okay? Now, so let's look at this point. This point, you've got this downward tangential velocity plus you have to consider the, the rightwards center of mass velocity. And so you've got that resultant velocity. You see this trajectory of a point that moves like this. Then right at the bottom, this is fascinating, guys. Right at the bottom, you have this situation where you've got this guy's rotating, okay? And so its velocity vector is pointing to the left when it's touching the road. But at the same time, the center of mass is pointing to the right. The velocity of the center of mass is pointing to the right. So these guys cancel each other out. So this is called um, the instantaneous velocity. Hold on, let me get the exact. Um, it's called, yeah, that's it. A point on the rim is in contact with the surface over which the wheel is rolling. Uh, that point has zero instantaneous velocity, right? Let's see if this, this point over here has zero instantaneous velocity as it touches the rim. Okay, right? So hopefully that has covered most of the important things.